So in this lecture, we're going to continue our study of ideal gases. We'll be looking at the formula that lets us calculate the work done on an ideal gas. We'll be looking at the first law of thermodynamics, and then we're also going to look at molar specific heats. So this lecture actually contains a lot of new big ideas and is going to be quite challenging. So you may need to come back and revise it a few times to fully understand it. This lecture is covered in sections 18.5, 19.2 and 19.7 of your textbook. But be warned, the textbook uses a different convention for work. So in the textbook, it uses the work done by a gas. In the lectures and on the formula sheet, we're going to use the work done on a gas. So these are the same but opposite. So they have opposite signs, but the magnitude's the same. So just remember if you're reading over the textbook that that's the work done by a gas. So first of all, a recap of the important things that we saw last lecture. Last lecture you were introduced to degrees of freedom and we said that there are ways in which particles can store energy and they're associated with the movement of the particle. So we have translational degrees of freedom, rotational degrees of freedom and vibrational degrees of freedom. And the type of molecule that we're talking about and the temperatures involved are going to determine how many degrees of freedom that those particles can have. And each of these degrees freedom of freedom can store energy so taking into account the total number of particles and total number of degrees of freedom inside the gas, we know that the total energy that a gas can store is given by a half F mkBt. So as we'll see later today, this is also called the internal energy, which is what we'll be looking at in a bit more detail in this lecture to start with. Last lecture, we also had a look at main free path. And you saw that mean free path is given by the formula the mean free path is 1 over root 2 pi d squared n on v. And we said that there's a distribution of speeds within ideal gases. So we can calculate, for example, the root mean squared velocity for a gas, which is proportional to its temperature. But it doesn't mean that all particles are travelling at that speed. It's just the average particle speed. Okay, so internal energy. Internal energy is all the energy of a system that is associated with its microscopic components, atoms and molecules, when viewed from a reference frame at rest with respect to the centre of mass of the system. So it's given the, the symbol, this E, with a subscript INT, standing for internal. And this is really just what we were calculating yesterday with the degrees of freedom, because that told us how much energy a gas could store. So the internal energy is given by a half F N K B T, and we need to assume that the velocity of the centre of mass, or the average velocity of the gas cloud, or whatever we're considering, is zero. Okay, so for you to think about why, why do we need to say when viewed from a reference frame at rest with respect to the centre of mass of the system? 